John's Episcopal Church in Chula Vista. If this is your first time, welcome. If you have been joining us online but have never been to St. John's, you will notice our beautiful entrance. And for those of you who are members and have been here many times, you know the gates need to lead to our lovely campus. So please, come join for our worship this morning. We walk through the breezeway, which leads into the narthex of the church, the narthex that joins the entrance with the main sanctuary of the church. Today we celebrate the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. It is a joyful day for us to gather to celebrate our faith. In the words that we will hear from Isaiah, all who keep the Sabbath and all who hold fast to my covenant, I will bring to my holy mountain and will make them joyful in my house of prayer. We gather today in this beautiful house of prayer, trusting that God is present with us. We are confident of his love and his mercy. So we gather this day to celebrate with joy. No matter who you are, no matter the amount of faith that you have, or where you are on your spiritual journey, please know you are always welcome at St. John's. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be a sacrifice for us and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive, thankfully, the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Maintain your justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love with the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those who are already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may, he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food from, and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. A wonderful ending to a story that I find a bit painful or troubling at best. The story about Jesus and the Canaanite woman also in addition to being a little troubling, is also one that is very timely. Jesus and his disciples go to the Gentile region near the Galilee. And while they are there, they encounter a foreign woman who asks that her daughter be healed. And she is flat out ignored. Why would Jesus not even acknowledge her request? The woman continues to plead with Jesus, and she keeps shouting after the disciples and after Jesus for them to heal her daughter. The disciples, as we hear, get perturbed, and they ask that Jesus send her away. And Jesus responds to them and says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, the woman keeps persisting, and now she comes and kneels before him and says, Lord, help me. And Jesus responds to her and says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Is Jesus really calling this Canaanite woman a dog? Jesus' mission was yes to the house of Israel, to the chosen children of God. And so here is this woman, not of the house of Israel, but a foreigner and a woman pleading for help. And Jesus is saying, is it fair? to give God's grace to one who is not of the house of Israel. 
And the woman responds to him and says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. With that painful, even pitiful, yet faithfully persistent plea, the Canaanite woman asks to be seen and to be heard. She is asking that Jesus recognize her as a child of God. It is confusing why Jesus responded first with no response, silence, and then with some of these harsh words. Why did Jesus respond to the woman in this way? Well, there are many interpretations of this story. One is that the reason Jesus said some of the things he said is that he was trying to teach and to test his disciples about who God is and about their mission that they have been called to. Another interpretation says that Jesus was testing the woman, seeing if she had faith enough that he would heal her daughter. Another more interesting interpretation is that the woman, the Canaanite woman, had something to teach Jesus. For Jesus, fully aware that his mission was to the house of Israel, the woman encouraged him, made him open his mind and see that all of God's children are in need of grace. All of God's children are in need of his mercy and his healing. Could it be that Jesus needed to have his eyes opened to see that his mission was for all of God's children? Jesus really, I don't think, was being mean to this woman. Um, rather, I think he was trying to tell us, because as we hear in the end, he does provide healing to the woman's daughter. So no matter the interpretation of the story, I think the most important part of the story is that God does provide mercy and healing to all people, no matter what. So a person of faith who comes to Jesus, no matter who they are, is welcomed and is healed. Now, I said that this story is timely. I say that because I think it is way too easy for us to assume that God is always on our side, that God looks like us, and that God favors us who look like us. When in reality, God cares for all people, not only the ones who look like us, but rather those who may even look different than us. In February, our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, visited Chula Vista and our parish of St. John's. Here, along with the presiding bishop from Mexico, they signed a unilateral agreement to support, to heal, and to work together for all of God's people. 
in the ceremony, which was live streamed, and perhaps you had an opportunity to watch it, Bishop Curry said in his address, he spoke the words of the Afro-American spiritual. In God, there is no East or West. There is no North or South, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide world. There is one fellowship of love. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter the country from which you come. It does not matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter whether you are Jew or Gentile. There is one great fellowship of love in this whole world. These past several months in our country has challenged that notion. For in this country, we have experienced the pain of racial injustice through the murder of several innocent Black Americans. These deaths have sparked protests in many of our cities all across this country, calling for an end to prejudice and for a reform of our systems so that never again will a person encounter a brutal attack just because of the color of their skin. Part of this reform also calls us to look in our hearts and see what needs to be changed within us. I have to admit, I have had to come to grips with my own thinking and sadly, my own prejudice. I grew up in an area of this country, in a small rural town where no one looked different from me. There were no blacks, there were no Latinos, there were no homeless. We all looked the same. And so that was my worldview, is that everybody was like me. I am somewhat embarrassed to admit in this time of racial injustice that in my hearing and when I read Black Lives Matter, I quickly jumped to All Lives Matter. And there lies my own sense of prejudice. Yes, don't get me wrong, all lives do matter, but all are not suffering. All are not being persecuted because of racial injustice. And by not focusing on the one who is being persecuted, and by not calling for justice in our communities, we are a part of the racial problem. I heard this notion of Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. I, I heard it related in this way. Jesus, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, there are a hundred sheep, but one goes missing. Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Perhaps the 99 are saying, but what about us? Don't we matter? Of course, the 99 still matter, but they are not the ones in danger. Just the one is in danger. 
I think that knowing what is right without speaking in some way is not enough. To know in our hearts that someone in our society is hurting calls us to speak and to act in order to bring about justice in our world. The Canaanite woman, her first plea was met with silence. Imagine what might have happened if Jesus had just turned away. Or what if the woman receiving silence just backed away and left? Would Jesus have recognized that his mission really is to the whole world? Would he have recognized that the forgiveness, the healing, the mercy that he offers through the gift of himself is really for all and not just some? Would he have imagined that God loved and sent him to save the whole world, not just part of it? I don't know. I don't know what would have happened if the woman had walked away. But what I do believe is that by the woman being persistent in her faith and asking for God's mercy and God's help in order to heal her daughter, that that was a testimony that in it she said, see me, see me as a person, not as a woman, not as a Canaanite, not as a person of a minority or a foreigner, but rather see me as a child of God. And he did. Jesus saw her as a child of God. Jesus saw her as a person of faith and healed her daughter. How do we see her? The Canaanite woman came before Jesus and said, have mercy, son of David. She professed her great faith. And I now invite you to profess the faith in which you believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind and with all our soul, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, our parish of St. John's, Bishop Susan, and for all the clergy and all the people of our diocese, may our faith be great. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace throughout the world, for the unity of all peoples, may world leaders protect and sustain the most vulnerable among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of our nations and for all in authority, may they serve wisely for the common good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and our state, for farms and field, and for those who labor to bring in the harvest, may, may their work produce an abundance of the fruits of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom that we may be faithful stewards and strive to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, those suffering from the coronavirus, for those burdened with anxiety, the poor and the oppressed, for the many unemployed and those with little food or shelter, for all those listed on our parish prayer list, and for all who remember and care for them, may they know of God's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Robert Bailey, for all the departed, and that our lives may end in faith and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. John and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to your love and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us pray for those serving in the armed forces, first responders, medical professionals, essential workers, and their families. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces, first responders, medical professionals, essential workers, and their families. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and challenges. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you in faith. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you now to share a sign of peace with those around you. 
If you are at home with family and loved ones, please greet them with that peace. If you are alone, I invite you to bring to your mind those whom you hold in your heart and would wish to share that sign of peace. It is our custom here at St. John's to recognize those special occasions in our shared lives, such as birthdays and anniversaries. For the birthday blessing, please type those you'd like to remember into the chat that we may all pray for them. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This week, Reverend Roger and Cliff are celebrating their two-year anniversary. As with birthdays, please add any other couples whom you would like, with whom you would like to share this blessing. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing particularly upon Reverend Roger and Cliff and grant them your grace that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may continue to be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Kathy, for offering those prayers for birthdays and anniversaries. And I especially thank you for giving that blessing to Cliff and I on this anniversary of our marriage. I, I truly appreciate um, your prayers. I also want to ask all of you to hold in your prayers, Father Jack. Father Jack underwent a heart procedure on Monday of this past week, and it was a difficult procedure. And he continues um, to be in critical condition. His heart is not working as it should and his breathing is very um, labored because he is so weak. And so I ask that you continue to keep Jack and Sarah in your prayers in the coming week. I also sent out a pastoral message this past week about the passing of Robert Bailey. Robert is a member of St. John's he was an usher at the eight o'clock service and has served in other capacities um, at St. John's. Um, and it was a shock to hear of his death. And so um, I ask that you keep Bob and his family in your prayers. This is a difficult time of grieving for everyone. And so we hold Bob and his family in our prayers. Eternal rest grant unto Bob, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you who continue to contribute to the work of St. John's. I know that we are going through a difficult time um, in this pandemic and some people are unemployed and some people are struggling to make ends meet. And so in whatever way um, you are able to contribute, know that your contribution is certainly a gift and it is appreciated. Stewardship is not only about money, but it's also our time and our talent. And we have many, many people um, to be grateful for. Um, Jane and her family share music with us on a weekly basis. Many members of our parish um, join to help in our liturgy in order that we can pray, um, gathering together in worship. So I, I thank all of you who contribute time, talent, and your treasure 
in order that the work of St. John's may continue. We definitely are a community who is about making God's kingdom present in our midst. So thank you for all that you give and all that you do. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is a tradition in Episcopal churches to share together in the sacrament of Holy Communion, sharing in Christ's body and blood. Since we cannot gather in person, our church allows a person who hungers for Holy Communion to share in its benefits. This is called spiritual communion, and it draws us together as the body of Christ in this world. Let us pray together a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. During this time of pandemic, many people are suffering from illness and anxiety. And so I offer this concluding collect, requesting God send his spirit to be amongst his people, that we may know in faith his power of healing and restoration. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we thank you for your unfailing presence and the hope which you give to us in this time of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear the good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us forth in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today for our liturgy. I invite you to stay afterwards and join us for coffee hour. The link to the Zoom coffee hour is in the chat section. So know that you are welcome to join us for coffee hour. Our dismissal comes from the beautiful courtyard of St. John's. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.